So, Dune came back to IMAX screens for one night only, just to get us all hyped for Dune Part 2. I managed to check out said re-release, so I'm gonna give you my quick thoughts on this trip to Arrakis on the big square. So let's get into it. First things first, Dune Part 1 was shot on the Arri Alexa LF IMAX and the Arri Alexa Mini LF, both cameras approved for the IMAX screen. I mean, IMAX is literally the name of one of those, so like, yeah, it kinda makes sense. So while this movie was of course not shot on traditional 70mm IMAX film, I think this movie is one of the best examples of digital IMAX out there. And I know there are quite a few IMAX purists out there who will reject any release like this that's not shot on film or projected in a true IMAX theater. Everyone of course has the right to their own opinion, but I think when you have a movie like Dune, where multiple sequences were shot with this format in mind, that doesn't just feel like they threw it into the IMAX theaters just because they could. Visually, this movie is simply breathtaking. Now, of course, this movie is over two years old at this point, so chances are pretty much everybody here has seen the movie, so go ahead and comment down below your experience checking out Dune Part 1, whether it be in IMAX, theaters, HBO Max back in 2021, whatever it is, let's just, uh, share our Dune experience if you will. I did manage to see Dune in IMAX back in 2021 when it was first released, but I really did not appreciate the craft of it back then. Cut to 2024, seeing it again in IMAX, and now I'm just all like, A lot of that comes from cinematographer Greg Frazier, who delivers an amazing looking film, just like with every movie he's attached to. Every single frame of Dune could be hung up on your wall with so much fine detail and atmosphere. This goes hand in hand with the amazing production design, whether you're talking about the different homeworlds for the Atreides and the Harkonnens, the incredible locations of Arrakis, the Ornithopters, the giant spice freighter harvester doodads. And when the production design and the cinematography are so good, they can instill fear into the audience before any of the villains say any words, you know you've got something good. That is what happened to me whenever we cut back to the Harkonnens in their home world, sitting in their dark, moody chambers going, we will destroy the Atreides, my sand, my worm, my dune. So with all that in mind, why not see it on the biggest screen you can? Like I mentioned earlier, the movie was shot with IMAX in mind, which gives the world a much grander scale, either when you see these massive spice harvesters or viewing the planets from space. When you compare the amount of visual information you get from a standard, you know, 239 widescreen format to IMAX, it's actually quite substantial. It's not just, oh, look, there's Paul Atreides' knees in that one shot shot definitely needed to see that no it's like oh everything is a lot bigger than i expected it to be this is so fucking cool getting to see this movie again in the format with my greater appreciation of imax itself it really made me fall in love with the movie in a brand new way it also greatly reminded me that this movie is very very loud the imax sound system is not around with this movie. From the moment the film begins, we're introduced to Arrakis and the Harkonnen, Hans Zimmer's incredible score just fires on all cylinders. Not quite enough to make you go deaf or get any tinnitus in your ears, but enough to make a standard theater screen or your home sound system just seem like a $20 Bluetooth speaker. Anytime in the movie where the track titled Paul's Dream came up and it goes <laughs> chills every time. And the IMAX aside, the movie as a whole is just simply spectacular. Even though it feels like it very much suffers from that part one syndrome where we've got this crazy new world and we have so much we got to establish right at the get-go with the characters, the lore, the planets, I think it's still able to tell a compelling story even though it is very much actively pushing us and saying, hey, guess what? We're gonna make a part two, so don't worry, that's when the really good stuff's gonna happen. A lot of that is thanks to its absolute absolutely stellar cast, including Timothy Chalamet, Zendaya, Rebecca Ferguson, Jason Momoa, Stellan Skarsgård, Javier Bardem, etc, etc. And even though a few of these characters clearly just don't have much to do in this first part, like Dave Bautista's Glosso Raban, I know I got that totally wrong there, but these actors' overall enthusiasm for these characters and working with Denis Villeneuve, it just gets me excited to see what they're gonna do with part two, because the whole cast and crew just gives the sense of oh, we're just getting started, boys and girls. However, 
This IMAX free release wasn't just simply throwing it back into the theater for one night, we also got an exclusive 10 minute look at Dune Part 2, which is due out on March 1st. It was only a few short minutes, but it really cranked my hype up to 11. Maybe even 12. You know, it starts off with your run-of-the-mill featurette with the cast and crew saying, Oh yeah, we made a movie, and it's awesome. Then we get a scene of Timothy Chalamet's Paul Atreides riding a sandworm for the first time. From what I've heard, it's one of the most memorable parts of the book itself. I still need to read the book, but I don't want to do that until the movie comes out because I don't want it spoiled for me, you know what I mean? Not only does this one scene fill up the IMAX screen, but the entire movie is supposed to be shot completely in IMAX. So that's exciting enough alone. But then we get to the worm itself, which the VFX are mostly worm-induced sand debris flying around, but the sound design... <laughs> I have never felt theater seats vibrate and shudder like this before. It literally felt like the worm was crawling under our seats, like some weird twisted audience gift from the Oprah Winfrey show or something. The tension, the score, the visuals just all culminate in a really satisfying payoff. Then we get a short trailer for part two showing moments yet to come, and good god the audience went ballistic. Dune part two is gonna be one hell of a cinema experience. It's coming out in IMAX 70mm, which I have tickets to go see, so look out for that review in about a month or two. And honestly, I just can't wait for all of our worm and spice dreams to come true. So, those are my thoughts on Dune and IMAX. If you want to see some more IMAX content from me, I got just the thing right over here. Otherwise, we'll see you on the break side.